Let's quickly revise management of diabetes in pregnancy, both over diabetes as well as GDM. First of all, what are the recommended kilocalories that has to be taken uh, by the pregnant patient depending upon her BMI? If the BMI is less than 25, then the recommended kilocalories per day is 3000. If the BMI is between 25 to 30 means she is going towards obesity, then the calories have to be reduced to about 2500 kilocalories per day. If the BMI is above 30, she is morbidly obese, then she should not consume more than 1500 kilocalories per day. The amount of weight gain will also depend upon the pre-pregnancy BMI. BMI less than 18 means she is a thin patient, 18.5 BMI and less, they can gain up to 12.5 to 18 kgs. A normal BMI patient between 18.5 to 24.9 BMI can gain up to 11.5 to 16 kgs of weight. Overweight patient between 25 to 29.9 BMI can gain up to 7 to 11.5 kgs of weight. And morbidly obese patients of above 30 BMI should not gain more than 5 to 9 kg. So 5 to 9, 7 to 11.5, 11.5 till 16 and beyond 16 up to 18, 20 can be the categories along which they gain weight depending upon their BMI. In the medical nutrition therapy which we advise to a patient with diabetes in pregnancy, what should be the ratio of protein, carbohydrate and fat? 20% proteins, 40% carbohydrates and 40% fats. 40% fats should include mainly unsaturated saturated fats. The saturated fats should be less than 10% and the cholesterol level should be very very low and the fiber has to be added. Very important question is what are the metabolic goals in a patient with diabetes in pregnancy? As you can see on the chart, the pre-meal value that means a fasting value should be less than 95, post-meal 1 hour PP should be 140 or less, post-meal 2 hour PP should be 120 or less, HbA1c preferably should be less than 6% but even 6.5 and below is good. Average capillary glucose levels should be that is a random sugar should not be more than 100 mg percent. When do we start insulin? First of all, insulin is a drug of choice. We do not give any oral hypoglycemics because they can cross the placenta and cause hypoglycemia in the fetus. Moreover, they are not as effective as insulin. So apart from metformin and glubozide, we do not use any oral hypoglycemic. When do we start insulin? First of all, in patients who have over diabetes, pre-gestational diabetes, there is no role of oral hypoglycemic drugs. Secondly, a patient with GDM on MNT and on diet control, even then she is not able to maintain the metabolic goals for at least two weeks. Then in that that case we start her on insulin. Then if the patient's value, the postprandial sugar value after meals two hours later is coming back to more than 200 at, at any time, we do not start anything, we do not give her or advise her MNT, we just start her on insulin. And lastly, the international guidelines say that even though the metabolic goals have been met, but if the sonography is showing a fetal weight of more than 90% of the average and AC more than 75%, start her on insulin. So these are the four indications for insulin. How do we manage patients antenatally? Anomaly scan is a must for all kinds of diabetes in pregnancy between 18 to 20 weeks. Fetal echo is not recommended in patients with GDM because they are not at risk for cardiac defects. But the patients with overt diabetes are at risk. So they should have a fetal echo between 24 weeks to 26 weeks. And fetal growth scans are a must. One between 28 to 30 weeks and then the second one between 34 weeks and beyond that to check for the abdominal circumference. Minimum gap between the ultrasounds can be of three weeks. What are the recommended number of antenatal visits for a patient with diabetes? A patient with GDM with a well-controlled sugar can come to the OPD just like a normal non-diabetic patient. A patient with GDM but with uncontrolled uh, sugar, in that case she has to come two weekly in the second trimester and weekly in the third trimester. How do we manage patients who are in labor or the patients who are undergoing induction of labor or elective caesarean section? Kindly follow the chart that I have given you on the screen. First of all, give the evening dose of insulin but omit the morning insulin dose. Start her on two hourly monitoring of the plasma glucose. Add regular insulin to 5% dextrose to neutralize it. So basically we add 100 to 125 ml per hour to neutralize the dextrose. Hourly blood glucose monitoring is to be done once the neutralizing dose has been started. Glucose levels, if they are more than 100, you have to infuse insulin at 1 to 1.25 units per hour. Keep the target blood sugar as 100. Fetal monitoring with Doppler CTG has to be continued. Epidural analgesia is the best for patients undergoing normal labor, normal delivery. Planned caesarean also, in that case, we omit the morning dose but we give the evening dose. Early cord clamping has to be done to prevent hypervolemia in the baby. Remember, in planned caesarean section, we avoid general anesthesia. As such, we don't give general anesthesia now. But why do we avoid in diabetes in pregnancy? Because we want the patient to resume her oral intake as soon as possible. So with spinal anesthesia, we are better off. Thank you very much.